By all accounts, the number of people playing outdoors in Idaho has been growing rapidly in recent years, as record numbers of people move here or vacation here. That's led to an increase in litter, trigger trash, trespassing, resource damage, and human-caused wildfires. We've just seen a huge influx in uh, people coming outdoors. It would stand to reason that the more users that we get out here, the more violations that we're going to get out here. Well, we've seen a big influx of motorized users everywhere. And I think big side-to-sides -side has been one of the biggest um, influxes that we've seen. The Indian Springs Recreation Area, located in the foothills of Twin Falls and Kimberly, is managed by the Bureau of Land Management for multiple use. It's open to everything. UTVs uh, um, and ATVs and Jeeps, they jump off here, drive up to the forest, travel around during the summer. Um, we have a well-developed 40-some miles of single track trail, and it's open to everything, that, that single track. Um, so motorbikes, mountain bikes, equestrian is growing here, um, and then hikers and, and people just out being outside. There's also a shooting area at Indian Springs. Livestock grazing and its critical mule deer winter range and priority sage-grouse habitat. In a place with so many uses, it's imperative for all users to show respect for others, while also taking care to avoid conflicts with other groups or cause damage to the land, officials said. Doesn't matter if you're a ATV rider, a bicycle rider, or a cattleman with livestock, you're all different users of this ground. Know the rules, know the etiquette, know what you're supposed to do, and it's easier to get along with people. A big part of getting along is taking the time to plan your trip in advance, research where you can go on approved trails, and plan a route that follows public roads to your destination. So that's one of the biggest conflicts that we're having. And now, especially with the influx of new people coming in, they really don't understand. They just see open range and it all looks the same. A fence is a fence and the gate's a gate. It's like it's all ready to go. So you need to understand where you're at. It's crucial to stay on designated public roads and trails. The, the rule is if it's a road, you stay on the road. You do not make user-made roads, you do not cut across and make your own road. We have to be stewards of the land, regardless what kind of user you are. Concerns about recreation access issues have become top of mind for the Idaho Rangeland Conservation Partnership, a diverse group of people who care about the land and encourage responsible use by all user groups. The Idaho Rangeland Conservation Partnership formed in 2018 to bring recreation and conservation groups together with ranchers and state and federal agency officials to share ideas in a safe, non-judgmental setting about land stewardship, wildlife, and multiple use management. Common concerns such as preventing human-caused fires, packing out garbage, preventing private land trespass, showing respect for all user groups, and preserving native sage steppe habitat for wildlife and livestock grazing are all crucial issues that IRCP participants care about, officials said. IRCP has held multiple panel discussions on recreation access issues to air concerns and search for solutions. Landowner Tom Page has been engaged with IRCP recreation access discussions along with Ken Crane, Kent Oliver, and Lieutenant Brown. With more and more users, it's, it's the kind of thing that is necessary to resolve issues around multiple use or recreation access or, you know, good behavior on public lands to reduce wildfire risk and weed spread and all the other things like that. And, and, you know, and again, and then you just get a chance to meet people from other walks of life that you wouldn't, and so that, that helps engender some more civil discussion. In this video, experts share a number of tips and trip planning resources to promote good stewardship of Idaho's rangelands.
Issues arising in the Indian Springs Recreation Area and BLM lands nearby are emblematic of natural resource concerns being observed in Idaho statewide. For example, there are many areas with mixed land ownership and a broad mix of recreation uses where people need to do their homework before they go. People who purchase new motorized trail machines need to research what trails are open to them. Experts recommend doing research on large format paper maps, the internet, and mobile apps like OnX that show land ownership. Just look right here. You've got a, a road that comes up to an area and stops, but yet it has been forged up the mountainside. That's not, that's user made. That's not, that's not a sanctioned road by the Bureau of Land Management, which is the land we're standing on. Riding clubs like the Magic Valley ATV Riders were formed years ago to help motorized users understand the rules and go on club rides to learn about the best trails to enjoy. Riding off trail can give all motorized users a black eye, Oliver says. Public lands is for everybody. And it's, it's not my land, it's our land. And if we don't respect our land, we're gonna lose access in a lot of areas. There are many trails for motorized users to enjoy in the Magic Valley, and thousands of miles of trails statewide. People just need to learn the ropes about what trails are suitable for them. Single track trails, for example, are for hiking, biking, trail running, motorbikes, and horseback riders. 50-inch motorized trails are specifically for ATVs and narrow side-by-sides like Polaris Razors. Jeep trails and dirt roads are open to the wider utility terrain vehicles, known as UTVs or side-by-sides. Motor vehicle use maps developed by the U.S. Forest Service explain what trails and roads are open to each use. The maps are available at all national forest offices and online. Motor vehicle use map that tells you what, are, what trails you can operate a motorized vehicle on. It tells you whether that trail is for single track only. It'll tell you if that trail is a 50 inch or more. It'll tell you if it's a Jeep trail or if it's open to all vehicle. The motor vehicle use map is the Bible for the forest. It's imperative that people do not try to ride a larger trail machine on a 50 inch trail. Rock or steel post barriers at trailheads remind users that the trails are made for ATVs or 50 inch side by sides. When people start going around it, now they're causing, they're in violation, quite frankly, because number one, they're going to be on a, on an illegally on a, tra on a 50 inch trail with a wide machine. They're off trail for secondly, plus they're creating an environmental problem by tearing up the side of the hill, which causes erosion. Riding in a responsible way is crucial. Here's a message from the Idaho Stay on Trails campaign. Protect Idaho's backcountry. Respect other riders, stay on the trails, and follow trail rules. Planning your route ahead of time can help navigate through areas with mixed land ownership. Big picture maps show where people will encounter private lands, shown in white on BLM or Forest Service maps, on their way to public lands. But this is state blue, this light blue. This is BLM, this sort of faded yellow. And then this dark green is the ranch itself. And so you can see even this one little loop touches on three different land ownerships. Big picture maps also help users plan their route to their destination following public access roads. That's where you need to have the big picture. You need to figure out where it is that you want to go. I think it's important to do their homework so that we can continue to have sort of a civil use by all parties of public and private lands, which as you know in the West are very mixed up. And so knowing where to go and knowing how to act responsibly is only going to increase your credibility when you want to talk to those folks about access or management. Online resources like the Idaho Trails Interactive Statewide Map, sponsored by the Idaho Department of Parks and Recreation, is a great resource for trip planning. Click on a trail and the online trails map tells you what types of uses are allowed on the trail, season of use, trail length, and more. 
When you're navigating your ride in the field, use a GPS or online apps like OnX to navigate challenging areas with mixed land ownership that might not be well marked. Most backcountry areas in Idaho are out of cell range, so be sure you're using a satellite-based system that works without cell service. Or download key maps for offline use before you go. The technology of today is just, oh, it's amazing. You need to have the resources with you, you know, for the area that you're going to be riding in. Know if you're on public, know if you're on private, talk to landowners, get permission to be on their place. If private lands are posted no trespassing with signs and orange paint, do not trespass. Always make sure you have a proper backstop when you're out target shooting. The Indian Springs area has a natural bowl where people engage in target shooting. Shoot safely. That's one of our biggest issues here. We have mountain bikers, horseback riders, UTV riders all around. So it's really critical to know where your backstop is and that you have a safe backstop. Bullets striking rocks can cause sparks and ignite a wildfire too. Here right behind us are evidence of two fire starts from shooting target practicing. This hillside right here last year burned and then there's another fire scar just up behind and that was uh, bullets starting fire. A Bellevue man shooting at an exploding target started a major wildfire in the Pioneer Mountains in 2018. Shooting at exploding targets is illegal on public land. The man was cited for the violation. Started a big fire that burned some really good habitat for multiple wildlife species. So, and cost the taxpayers millions of dollars in trying to repair it. Please remember to pick up your used shells and bullet casings when target shooting on public lands. If you bring a target and shoot it, take it home with you. And clean up your empty casings and shells uh, where you're shooting. And it helps preserve the area and make the next user coming out enjoy the area better. When you're recreating on multiple use grazing lands, known as rangelands, you are likely to see cattle or sheep grazing as you pass by. Ranchers have permits to graze livestock on public rangelands. They pay grazing fees to the state and federal government for the privilege to do so. Make sure you treat livestock with respect, officials said. We've had several cases this year where livestock have been shot mutilated, left to rot, shot right off the roadways. It's a really, it, it, it is a huge disrespect for another user of this, of this ground. Most people know it's important to leave the livestock alone and yield to them on roads and trails. It's not just a livelihood that they're putting in perspective, it's also a management of the resources on the land. By grazing an area can help reduce the possibility of these mega fires that we've had. Ultimately, if everyone shows respect for others, we can care for and share public rangelands for decades to come. The biggest message that I, I would like to get out to people is that it doesn't matter if you are horseback, if you're hiking, if you're on a motorcycle or ATV, be a good steward of the land. Follow the rules and enjoy your outdoor experience, Paige says. Certainly as a recreational user, if you want to have good relationships with private landowners and land management agencies for whatever your use is, if you want those uses to continue, obviously I think it's, it's anyone who's pretty smart about it is going to try to behave and play by the rules and encourage others in their you know, user group to do the same thing. Oliver encourages trail riders to join clubs, go on trail rides, and learn the country. I really just want people to understand that we are working towards a goal for all of us to be able to come up and recreate. This is our, our, our public lands. Let's keep it pristine and enjoyable for everybody. The Idaho Rangeland Conservation Partnership will continue to have an open dialogue about recreation access issues today and in the future. 
For more information, please see this recreation access brochure with 10 tips for a safe and enjoyable outdoor adventure. Go to the IRCP website to learn about future discussions on this topic.